now it is uh, 6.36, so uh, good afternoon, all the participants of today's uh, workshop that is on uh, how to develop uh, dissertation uh, basically, uh, the, those who are you know, studying in the master degree or master de uh, master's level. Today we have uh, our speaker, Dr. Asutosh Pradhan. Professor Pradhan is currently working as a professor in Department of uh, Social Work, Central University, Himachal Pradesh. Additionally, he is also uh, head of the department in charge department of sociology. Uh, Professor Pradhan has completed uh, his master degree. He is basically uh, uh, Odia and he completed his master degree from uh, National Institute of Social Work and Social Sciences in 1988. Professor Pradhan has about, about 32 years of teaching experience and uh, he uh, taught to the master degree students and uh, uh, students of different uh, universities, central universities uh, in more than four states. So additionally, he has also delivered lectures in uh, Jawaharlal University, Delhi, Jammu University, Central University of Jammu. Utkala University, Bhuvaneswar, Sambalpur University, uh, and and many others. He has over 20 uh, publications in different uh, <coughs> peer-reviewed uh, journals and journal, journals uh, listed in different uh, 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 national and international reputes. And he has also um, uh, coordinated projects and uh, worked under action based projects and uh, uh, he has also working experience of uh, in different action based organizations or ngos for for more than 3 years and uh, professor pradhan is a active member of national association of professional social workers in india he is a life member as well as active member and also, he is associated with many other uh, national organizations related to uh, related to social work or in the field of social work. Besides that, he has also administrative experience. Like, you no, know, he served as executive council member, member of board of studies, and he also served as former dean, social science, Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Bihar. Former Bihar. academic Bihar. coordinator, uh, uh, former OST admi uh, administration, uh, Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Bihar, Bihar. and for, uh, former head of the department, Jain Vishwavarati Institute. Institute. So, uh, thank you so much, sir, you so much. for, uh, for uh, uh, joining us today and uh, accept our invitation and uh, this proposal is basic uh, this workshop is basically we understand very important for uh, the master degree students basically those who are you no know, uh, struggling in their phases like you no know, how to develop a proposal or how to write the dissertations and i am sure this WhatsApp will definitely, although we are connecting in virtual mode, but I am sure this will definitely going to help our students to write dissertations in a very systematic and scientific way. And we, we as I being a uh, member of Gyanalo, which is going to organize this you know, uh, workshop, we also assure all our participants in future we are going to plan and conduct more and more similar type of workshops consisting or covering the social issues or to enhance 
the writing skills writing research skills, skills and and uh, and and the expertise in working with different development organizations or or, or other agencies so with this i welcome professor asutosh pradhan and i at the same time i also welcome all the participants to this workshop and uh, i also request to all the participants if they have any any idea or suggestion to to conduct similar type of workshop or any workshop related to any issue they may uh, email us the email id and i uh, last but not least i apologize for writing the mail id wrongly in the mail email that is ganalok dot india it is uh, some uh, spelling uh, error uh, i found later uh, and apologize for that uh, when you are writing mail you please write yes. ganalok dot india at the red gmail dot com thank you so much and i welcome professor pradhan to deliver thank you thank you uh dr pradeep sahu it is indeed uh, a great favor for me especially to virtually speak to a lot of people mostly who belong to odisha and since uh, being in odisha at times becomes difficult for me because of my engagements official engagements and teaching and also administrative engagements um, often i am not able to be in odisha otherwise we could have done this in offline mode also but in future uh, whether it is uh, representing odisha professional social workers association or gyana lok foundation i think uh, in future we'll be able to collaborate uh, and offer more such programs i believe uh, if i am not wrong dr pradeep may correct me this is uh, the first uh, such uh, training program that uh, systematically uh, dr pradeep has uh, formulated to conduct and it will be done in a sort of a series of lectures and workshops uh, before uh, proceeding into the details of uh, how to develop a research proposal uh, first of all you need to understand all of us need to understand that this is simply a beginning and uh, it will not uh, give a lot of clarity to all of you um, it will simply set the ball rolling and uh, this will be a stepping stone because all the hard work you will have to do at your own level because research is a very rigorous and painful process until and unless we do things systematically and scientifically uh, we will not achieve the outcome <clears throat> so my request to all of you that you please do not have a lot of expectations from this uh, lecture if you are able to get in brief what is the basic structure as to how to develop a research proposal i think the purpose of this uh, uh, lecture and also workshop will be fulfilled basically i think uh, we have designed this in the form of a workshop Uh, but it starts with the lecture we will of course definitely have uh, discussions so i'll be giving adequate time to all of you to clarify your um, doubts and uh, in the next session in the next week we'll uh, or this week tomorrow i think we'll be having uh, both a lecture and a workshop and i would request all of you to make arrangements for for uh, laptops or desktops so that uh, 
you, the the sample Excel sheet that will be shared with all of you. If you are able to do it uh, as we go along, then I'm sure at least some uh, basic understanding of Excel and how to manage data and databases in Excel and how to do data analysis in Excel that uh, you'll be in a position to learn. Uh, Excel is a very powerful tool. Of course, it is very dynamic in SPSS or in other software. A uh, lot of uh, things are given here. You'll have to do a little bit of extra uh, hard work, but once you get it, once you are able to understand, uh, there's not much in it. I learned in 1996 myself Excel without any help and assistance from anybody. Uh, we did not have YouTube then. We did not have internet also then. So somehow I could learn uh, Excel on my own by using the help uh, menu. And um, especially for data analysis, data entry, data analysis, drawing tables, drawing charts, developing tables, drawing charts, pie charts, bar diagrams, etc. Uh, I could do it myself. I, I speak this with confidence uh, because I have done it myself on my own. So all of you can do it. So if you are sincere to yourself, sky is the limit and you can go anywhere. So before uh, starting this, uh, my slides, First thing you should with correct. Permission, yeah. With, with your permission, let me just tell for one minute regarding the you know, design of this workshop. So actually for all the participants and for your knowledge, this workshop is designed for, uh, for one week. And in this one week period, it starts today and it will continue till next Sunday. Within that, we have different activities uh, designed under this workshop. First, uh, first today and tomorrow, uh, Dr. Professor Pradhan is going to know, uh, interact and deliver the process. After that, we will share, as uh, Professor Pradhan told, we will share one uh, sample questionnaire uh, interview tool or questionnaire schedule, you can say. And along with that, one Excel format will be shared with you to enter that data. So after doing that, again in the next week, again in the same Saturday and Sunday, we'll have the discussion regarding how to uh, analyze data and, and write reports or write dissertation using that data or interpretation. Everything will be discussed in the next week. So this is all about the workshop that has been uh, designed for this purpose. And I hope all must understand this and likewise, whatever our professor will guide you, uh, you need to cooperate. Thank you. Yeah, my sincere request to all of you is that uh, uh, all those around 70 people have joined or around 65 people have joined uh, apart from myself and the other administrators of this training program or workshop. So I would request all of you, if you find it interesting, do uh, even if you don't find it interesting, do be, be with us because something or the other you will learn in the process. OK, uh, so uh, I uh, was about to tell you that uh, often we commit a very big mistake. That is, we say that I am developing my synopsis and I'll be submitting it for my uh, uh, PG dissertation or my PhD or my MPhil means the first step as most of us uh, say that I will be submitting my synopsis and uh, it is simply the start of the dissertation process uh, or the MPhil or PhD process. So we commit this mistake by telling that I am submitting 
a synopsis or I am developing a synopsis and I will be submitting it in another one month or two months or one week or two weeks. Actually, uh, most of us, almost 80% of uh, people in academics and also students alike, they use the term synopsis. Actually, synopsis is the summary of something bigger. And in research, it is a term which should be used at the end. That means when the thesis has been written, uh, you are supposed to be using the word synopsis, which in fact is a summary of the entire thesis. Uh, so instead of synopsis, please keep it in mind that it should be spelled as a research proposal. So let us move on. Now the, the outline of this research proposal. Um, you start with a title page. So when you develop the thesis, uh, most often you will see that there is a title page and there are a lot of other pages inside the content page, the uh, list of tables, the list of graphs, abbreviations used. So I'm not going into that in detail now, but later on, maybe some other day we'll be discussing that. So there uh, has to be a title page and then the thesis, which is referred to here as the main body. So the main body uh, of the research proposal consists of uh, these various steps like introduction, uh, then review of literature, theoretical framework, research questions, and research objectives. Uh, in the introduction, uh, basically, we'll be discussing again in detail later on after four or five slides. Uh, in introduction, basically, you'll be speaking about the topic, the, the research questions that you have in mind, and basically about the operational definitions. Uh, of the terms that you have used, the key words that you have used in the topic and, or the associated terms which do not find a place in the title of your uh, thesis or the title of your research proposal, but they are very important terms or key terms that you would be using. So all the important uh, words, the operational definition, that has to be clearly spelled out. Now, what do you mean by operational definition? See, uh, uh, that is a rickshaw. A rickshaw can have various meanings in different parts of the country. You'll find that a rickshaw can mean different things to different people or different things to different people living in different parts of this country. A rickshaw could um, it is of three wheels. It could be a two wheeled rickshaw, which is pulled by hand pulled rickshaw. It is called it. You'll find that basically in West Bengal and in Kolkata. Nowadays, I think they have stopped it, but in some of the interior parts of Kolkata, you'll find it. Then uh, it can be an auto rickshaw also, which is uh, run by a motor. Nowadays, you have the uh, electric EV rickshaw also. So, so on and so forth. So if you are doing, let us say, for example, uh, research on rickshaw pullers, you need to specify in your, defin uh, in, in your uh, definition, I mean the operational definition as to what is the meaning of the term rickshaw. That has to be clearly outlined. Are you doing this study on uh, hand pulled rickshaw or on a tricycle, the type of a tricycle rickshaw or an auto rickshaw or an EV electric vehicle rickshaw or so on and so forth. So that has to be clearly defined because it will influence uh, the objectives that you will be framing and also the nature of uh, uh, tools that you will be developing, whether it is the interview schedule or the questionnaire or any other or skills which you are using. So basically, if you are clear as to what are the key terms used and if you if you define it clearly, then your work will become very easy. There will be clarity in your thoughts and uh, clarity in whatever you would like to express. And uh, whenever somebody reads your proposal or the thesis, they 
could they will be in a position to understand that yes this is what is the meaning of the term as used in this particular proposal or this particular thesis or dissertation so the second is the review of literature it is very very important because the review of literature review of literature means what whatever existing literature is there um, uh, which you come across in the library in the form of books or journals or nowadays we have the internet and lot of internet sources we can uh, use or we can visit lot of sites and we can download lot of journal articles newspaper articles uh, content web content in the websites and we can also analyze all these information so whatever existing literature is there and people who have done research on this topic that you have chosen for yourself you need to understand because it is said that we should not be rediscovering the wheel if you say that i am the only one on this earth who has done research on this uh, nobody is going to accept you because uh, because somebody or the other in some corner of this globe he or she might have or they might have done uh, research on this topic or a similar topic so you need to find out actually it takes a lot of time for a pg dissertation at least you should research for it for at least uh, 15 days to one month and if you are in mphil program nowadays mphil program uh, i think it has been truncated by the government so if you are doing your phd then you will have to devote at least 4 to 5 months in doing a 3 to 4 months at least for doing a review of literature going through existing literature so that you understand as to who all have done what sort of uh, uh, literature uh, what sort of research they might have done and this will lead you to something which is referred to as the gaps in literature lot of people might have done lot of work but something may be missing some particular aspect they might have missed so you need to identify those gaps because if you if you uh, rediscover the wheel then it will not be a great contribution to the existing body of literature or body of knowledge but if you are able to identify the gaps the areas in which the dark areas the gray areas in which not much has been written or not much work has been done so uh, in fact uh, people will look to you for the type of uh, rigor you have put in and the research outcome that you might have um, come out with the next is the significance of the study why do you want uh, to do this research since most of you may be from social work or maybe some from sociology or anthropology you need to understand what for you are doing this study uh, it is not the purpose is not that you simply want a degree but some purpose it should have it should add to existing body of knowledge it should uh, identify certain uh, gray areas or gaps in existing literature so you are in a position to contribute to the existing body of knowledge or body of uh, literature so in fact in social work not much research is being done in social work as such uh, most of us or many of us either do it Uh, in the field of in the realm of economics or in the realm of mostly in the realm of sociology or social anthropology we fail to do research in the field of social work which is referred to as social work research so we need to understand whether uh, how we can contribute to the existing body of knowledge how we can do research let us say in the methods of social work social case work social group work community organization Uh, and bharatiya parampara uh, of samaj karya or samaj seva so um, not much has been written about uh, about the indian social work uh, because um, um, most of us or many of us have not gone to the existing uh, literature and what sort of uh, samaj seva or social work or social service existed in the past so maybe we are not uh, conversant with sanskrit or uh, pali or prakrit 
there may be existing literature about uh, samaj seva or social work and uh, the traditional way of uh, social work how it was being done in the past so if we are able to if we have a grooming and a grounding in sanskrit or any other um, indic uh, indic uh, languages then i think we will be able to come out with very marvelous findings and it will it will uh, help you to become popular in the professional field of social work now what is the scope of the study uh, that you need to be clear about what exactly you are supposed to be doing in this study um, you are simply uh, going to do a descriptive research or a uh, inferential research or you want to find out what uh, impact uh, has uh, been made uh, in the context of some intervention program that might have been uh, implemented by some agency by the government by the ngo or by your own department uh, if there are field projects so what is the scope of the study uh, whether you are catering to the social psychological economic um then uh, relational aspects uh, the problem areas the challenges that people may be facing on whom you are uh, focusing this research on so next is the theoretical framework like um that you need to be aware of uh, whether um you are doing this research in in terms of the systems theory or the eco ecological theory or in terms of the strengths perspective or evidence based practice all these the, the, what words i am spelling out many of you uh, some of you may be knowing many of you may not be knowing so we need to understand what is the framework in which we are doing this or whether it is in the in the field of operation oppressive uh, uh, research in the field of operation or oppress oppressive social work so you need to be very clear as to what theoretical framework is being used and then is then we have the research questions you will be framing some research questions in your mind that uh, let us say the same example of riksha pulla um uh, what what sort of difficulties the riksha pullers may be facing uh, how will the riksha pullers uh, be managing their affairs their family affairs uh, whether the uh, at the end there will be a question mark when you are stating these things at the end it has to end with a question mark so that is why it is referred to as research questions uh, whether whether the income that these riksha pullers have uh, is adequate so that is again a question mark so this is how you will have to frame some questions at least five to six questions you should have so that it will help you in framing the objectives which is the next uh, phase in the research proposal and uh, it is said that about objectives research objectives it has to be smart means it has to be specific um it has to be uh, measurable whatever whatever variables you are using it uh, it has to be measurable let us say i am telling that um, there is an existence of god in my room it cannot be measured it cannot be uh, evidence cannot be uh, provided this is what till now i believe in but if somebody comes out with a mechanism as to how to identify god in, in this room and everywhere else um, in this universe and beyond then it would be a marvelous thing but until and unless we have the tools and the methods and the mechanism in identifying um, uh, this and measuring it then it will not be uh, proper to have such research objectives so uh, your objectives will have to be smart uh, means it has to be specific clearly it has to be framed in the form of a single sentence you cannot have uh, in one objective two or three sentences so one objective should be based on one variable or uh, between one or two variables what would be the relationship you are trying to uh, understand or draw so it has to be specific it has to be uh, then uh, measurable 
uh, it has to be achievable. It should, your research should not go on and on and on and on. You'll have to submit your dissertation at the end of the semester. So you'll have to take up only such number of objectives or you'll have to delimit your research to such an extent or you'll have to cover um, so many number of uh, respondents only or people on whom you will be doing the research. It should be uh, only that much which will uh, that which uh, you will be in a position to complete within a particular period of time. If you are doing your PhD, maybe you have three years time. But if you are doing a PG dissertation, you have only one semester. Nowadays, in the annual system, we had one year. So, in fact, in some of the institutes or colleges or universities, the dissertation work, it starts from day one. At least uh, the topic uh, is chosen by the middle of the first year and research work is undertaken. Uh, the data collection is done during the summer vacations and then the thesis writing, data analysis and writing of the thesis. Now it has become very easy because of uh, computers, but uh, uh, earlier days you imagine how data has to be compiled in a big graph, graph sheet um, and uh, how meticulously it has to be done. Uh, it had to be done and it was a very laborious uh, job. But nowadays it is so easy, even on a mobile also, you can collect data, store data and retrieve the data. And um, you, you can transfer this data to some computer, even if you do not have a computer, at least if you have a mobile, you can transfer this uh, data that you have collected through a mobile app uh, into some uh, computer, in some computer center by paying, 20 rupees, 30 rupees, and you can do your data analysis there. Those who have, fine, um, or those who do not have also, they can uh, take the help of uh, outside uh, shop uh, shops where this facility is available. So moving on to the next uh, step in the research proposal, uh, designing the res research proposal is the research method. This is the most important part, and this you need to understand. And if you do not understand uh, this, then uh, your research uh, work will not progress further. Here is uh, when often students uh, find it difficult to understand. And also if some questions are raised, they are not in a position to express themselves properly because until and unless we uh, do thorough reading, uh, until and unless we understand it uh, very clearly, until and unless uh, we do all the exercises in these steps uh, in a thorough manner, we will not be able to uh, express ourselves whenever questions are raised in the Viva Bose uh, for the thesis. <laughs> Sorry. So you need to take up a research design, whether it is a, uh, it refers to the type of research, um, briefly, I'll mention that you have uh, quantitative research and qualitative research. In quantitative research, you use survey research design uh, where you use uh, interview schedules and questionnaires or scales. And in qualitative research, uh, you use um, ethnomethodology, ethnography, um, uh, focus group discussions, so on and so forth. So uh, you basically first... Uh, uh, choose a particular research design, whether you want to do uh, a quantitative research uh, where the variables are quantifiable or you want to do a qualitative research uh, based on uh, opinions, uh, suggestions, uh, views, the personal uh, experiences of people and how to again uh, convert these uh, information which are qualitative in nature, which cannot be quantified uh, how you convert them into quantifiable form and do a thematic analysis. So you'll have to go into the depth of things. You'll have to refer the books further because uh, one hour time or one and a half hour time is not enough. Then actually the most important part starts from here, the area or locale of the study. Where do you want to locate your study? If, you, if I am referring to a hand pulled it, sir, then you cannot do this research or study in Odisha. You will have to go to Kolkata and you will have to do it. So, uh, of course, you might have decided 
well in advance that I'll be doing this work on handful rickshaw pullers only and anyhow I'll have to go to Kolkata, stay there for let us say 15 days or one uh, month and I'll do the data collection completed in at one go and then come back to my place and convert all these data that I have into the Excel format or SPSS format and uh, enter all the data and then analyze the data. So this location of the study, if you are doing a, a tribal study, then you will have to go to the tribal districts in Odisha or to whichever state you belong, wherever the tribals are there and whichever tribe you have uh, chosen, you'll have to go to that particular locality. You need to be aware as to where these people are living. You need to have a, uh, um, a Rekonsa visit or Reiki. You will have to do a Reiki uh, preliminary visit to the area where you want to do the study on. Have a discussion with people. Uh, you have not yet started your research work, but that will give you a lot of insights as to what all uh, are the problems of people, let us say, uh, what sort of uh, life people are living, let us say, what is the ecosystem like, what is the culture like of the tribal uh, group on whom you will be doing this research, uh, what are the uh, traditional uh, ways of uh, functioning, behaving, what are the social systems which are existing? What is what uh, are the uh, social institutions which are existing in in that particular tribal group? Uh, if let us say you are choosing uh, to do a study on vulnerable tribes, it means that uh, if you are doing this study in Odisha, who are those vulnerable tribes? Uh, primitive vulnerable tribes. It is defined by the government of India. So you will have to first understand as to what is the definition of a primitive and a vulnerable tribe. Maybe you will have to choose uh, samples from at least two or three vulnerable tribes because if you, when you make a mention of vulnerable tribes of Odisha, then there has to be or should be a representation of at least three or four different vulnerable tribes and you'll have to spread out across uh, the uh, the length and breadth of Odisha where the tribals, uh, these tribal groups would be staying. So a lot of planning has to be done before you even, even before you do the research also, uh, when you are writing your research proposal also, a lot of planning has to go, a lot of thinking, a lot of reflection has to go. Whether you are in a position to do uh, this study, can you roam around uh, in such a, a large part of uh, the state? Do you have the resources? Do you have the money? Can your uh, parents uh, support you in, uh, in doing this? So all these things you'll have to decide. And this uh, review of literature, if you have done it properly and thoroughly, then again it will help you to decide as to what should be the area or the local of the study. And when you start to decide what would be the area, which would be the population, who would be the people, then you will start to collect secondary data and secondary information so that you can decide further as to where exactly you will have to uh, locate your study. Then, uh, then it refers to the universe of the study. In the process, I have also referred to the universe. This is what is referred to as the population or the universe of the study, and you will have to delimit your your uh, research to a specific area where the people on whom you are conducting this study, uh, you will have to decide. So you'll have to delimit it so that it doesn't go beyond, uh, beyond your means and resources that you have at your disposal. And the next is the units of data collection. So <laughs> let us say if uh, we will uh, uh, do a study on uh, domestic violence. So who will be the units of the study? Will it be only those who are facing domestic violence or will it be those who are oppressing or the husbands who are conducting domestic violence or the wives who are doing domestic violence on husbands or um, if the wife is doing uh, violence on the husband, uh, who are the other people who are affected, whether the uh, parent-in-laws are also in-laws are also affected uh, or not. So 
what is the scope of your research on whom do you want to do the study see if domestic violence is on the uh, wife uh, or the woman if there are children then it could be impacting the children also so do you need to collect data from the children also because that will reveal very interesting facts and very serious and grievous things which you should be aware about so when you are deciding as to who would be the unit or what would be the unit of data collection you need to be clear whether you should only limit yourself to one respondent or there could be n number of respondent two respond two different type of respondent or three different types of respondent as i uh, refer to in the example uh, then uh, the question of sampling comes uh, before going to sampling we need to understand that um, if you have demarcated a particular area which refers to the population of the universe of the study and if you know on whom are you going to collect uh, data from uh, or you'll be focusing uh, for data collection are you going to collect data from each and every unit in the universe or population or you if the population is too large let us say 1000 2000 5000 or it is unlimited then it would not be possible on your part to collect uh, to have uh, data collected from so many number of people so if you are doing a uh, census survey then you are collecting each and every covering each and every unit of the universe but if you do not have the means then you will be limiting your data collection to let us say 50 or 100 or 150 or 300 or 400 depending upon your resources and time at your disposal so so then you will be going for a sam or or a, for a sample so uh, in order to choose as as particular sample the sample units then you need to understand as to how the sample units need to be selected so this is where we refer to the sample design it is not mentioned here in the next slide subsequent slides you will get to know about it so the sam what should be the sample design like uh, there are basically two different uh, uh, two two different types of uh, sampling uh, which is referred to as the probability sampling and the non probability sampling or it is also otherwise called as um uh, random sampling and non random sampling so in detail we'll be uh, looking uh, into it later on then uh, comes the sources of data from where will you get the data the data sources could be secondary sources of data or primary sources of data this is the broadest classification then from primary sources uh, from where will you collect the data whether Uh, you'll be collecting data from people from individuals from groups of people in groups or from you are not uh, meeting anybody you are not conversing with anybody you are not talking to anybody can you still collect data yes by using observation as a method uh, and observation guide as a tool you can collect data uh, uh, not from individuals but but relating to let us say if you are doing a research on anganwadi how anganwadis are functioning then then probably you will go to an anganwadi center and you simply will observe inside and outside uh, how how the anganwadi center looks like appears like how the things inside are arranged and uh, Uh, whether it is uh, in shambles whether the house is in shambles whether the roof is proper or not whether uh, it is damp and wet inside and children are sitting on the floor so you need to observe without collecting data uh, without asking questions also you can get lot of data and information so you need to know how to collect this data what should be the research tool that you will be using and what would be the method of Uh, data collection that you will be using um so when you are collecting data some ethical uh, issues are there so uh, you will have to follow and uh, 
and uh, when you are collecting data, you'll have to seek permission of the people um, from whom you'll be collecting information. So when if they give you permission, uh, then only you will uh, collect the data. Uh, at times nowadays, we have this habit of recording uh, without informing uh, in our mobile. Earlier, it was not possible. Nowadays, it is very easy to record the uh, interview, whatever interview you are having. But you need to seek permission of your respondent before you start the recording process. In fact, by hearing uh, the name of recording, many would say that, uh, sorry, we cannot uh, answer, uh, give you answer to your questions. Often you will find this. So um, you will be uh, in difficulty as to how to do this data collection. So you will have to think, but but without seeking permission of people, you cannot uh, start your data collection. And let us say, for example, if you are doing a research on uh, the functioning of, of NGOs, I'm jumping to another topic. If you are doing a research on, on the functioning of NGOs or one NGO, if it is a case study research approach under research design case study. So if you are doing this, uh, most often NGOs will not, let us say, uh, agree to conducting uh, they being uh, observed. Uh, you ask about their finances, uh, their style of functioning, whether democratically decisions are being taken, because these questions would be tricky questions and not uh, everybody would appreciate uh, answering uh, or, or answering to such questions. So often NGOs uh, refuse to do so. Some NGOs who understand a little bit about research and who empathize with the researcher, uh, they would say that fine, but we need to enter into an agreement. It has to be uh, on paper. It has to be recorded that when you complete your research, you will submit um, or uh, on completion of your research to uh, uh, data collection. All the research, uh, re, uh, sorry, the data that you have collected in the interview schedule or the questionnaire, it you will have to submit it to us after entering the data and analyzing the data. And also you'll have to submit a copy of your uh, research to us or at least an abstract of the uh, thesis or the dissertation you have done. So without entering into such an agreement, uh, your research work cannot. Uh, start. So these are certain ethical concerns uh, which you need to. Uh, there are a lot of other things also we can discuss, have a similar uh, lecture later on also. But before you start uh, collecting your data, the interview schedule or the questionnaire that you might have developed, it has to be pre tested. It means uh, after preparing the interview schedule, the interview schedule has a set of questions maybe n number of questions, 10 or 20 or 50 or 100. It may go up to five or 10 pages, uh, 15 or 20 pages also, depending upon the type of research that is being uh, done. But basically for PG uh, level dissertations, one page or two page or three page maximum uh, interview schedule um, you, you carry. And um, whether you have missed out some questions or not, or whether unnecessary questions have been framed or not, until and unless you collect data uh, as a uh, as a starting point uh, on a trial basis from four or five people, you will not be able to understand what mistakes you might have committed, what questions you have left, uh, the type of uh, question that you have framed, whether it has been framed in the proper manner or not. Uh, you'll come to know that you are asking uh, a particular question in a particular format, but the answer you are getting is just the opposite, and you never expected to get such an answer. You you were, were expecting to get an answer of a particular type. It means that something is wrong in the manner in which you have framed the question. So when you are doing a pretesting um, of your tool of data collection, I mean the interview schedule or the questionnaire, you will come to know as to uh, what you might have missed, what all questions you might have missed, you'll have to include those questions 
and what all unnecessary questions have been uh, have been framed those you will have to drop because probably you will not be able to uh, fulfill any of the uh, objectives that you might have created in in uh, for your research so each and every objective that you have framed each and every objective should have in order to satisfy the research questions and a particular research objective, uh, you will have to have a set of questions and these set of questions will qualify for fulfilling the purpose of a particular uh, or what a particular objective wants to achieve. So if you are having five, let us say, uh, objectives, maybe um, four or five uh, questions or five to 10 questions or 15 to 20 questions each for a particular objective you will be uh, framing and and that is how your questionnaire or interview schedule will become lengthy of one page or two two page or two to three pages next is the data analysis so after you have collected the data either with the help of uh, an interview schedule or a questionnaire or uh, uh, by using scales uh, then uh, you will have to uh, edit the raw data. See, while if you are using an interview schedule, means you have gone to the field, met the people, and uh, uh, you conducted the interview, you wrote down the answers uh, which the respondents responded to, responded to the question that you put uh, before them. So the uh, answers which you have written, you might not have got time, so you might have written down in uh, in in abbreviated form so lest you forget later uh, at the end of the day when you come back home you'll have to complete it many things you might have left out also um, a is a single word you might have written so later on you will expand it to a single uh, a, a sentence or two so editing of the raw data something uh, you might have um let us say income you might have written that in 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 the form of monthly income but uh, the data you should have uh, you you were asked to collect what annual income so you may not get the time enough to convert the annual uh, sorry monthly monthly income uh, data into into annual annual income okay so this this uh, editing work uh, you will be doing later on in the day when you find time, but never spill over your work uh, to the second day because most of it you will tend to forget. And there is a very important cue that you should take from me. You might you might have been uh, taught in the class also. You will be taught in the class also um, that uh, you need to have field uh, notes, maintain field notes. You need to have a diary where you maintain uh, field notes. Whatever observations you uh, make, it may not be, uh, you may not uh, note it down in the interview schedule, but in the field, in the form of field notes in a diary or in a notebook, you'll have to mention. So, so that qualitatively, uh, it will improve your dissertation or your research. So next is classification of data. If you are doing quantitative research, the data has to be classified. Uh, probably like, let us say, age group, age. You have collected age as it is. Uh, 25 years, 35 years, 31 years uh, for whatever is his or her age. So this, if you if you start to uh, start to analyze, you will you will it will not be meaningful so you will have to convert age into age groups so similarly there would be a lot of data uh, like income also into income group so into income classes so similarly like a caste caste also you have this age old classification of general unreserved then scheduled caste scheduled tribe other backward classes uh, tribals non tribals so this sort of classification to do it later on after you collect the data and uh, this is essential because that will help you in developing your tables uh, doing um, 
bivariate analysis, univariate analysis, or bivariate or multivariate analysis. So the next uh, thing is to uh, before before you enter the data in the Excel sheet or in a piece of paper uh, where the data is arranged in rows and columns, you develop the code book like uh, for age group uh, 10 to 15, let us say, then 15 to uh, 20, 20 to 25. So 10 to 15 is one code you, gi you give to that age group one, then 15, uh, 50, sorry, 10 to 15 is one, then 15 to 20 is two, and uh, 20 to 25 is three. So this is what is referred to as coding. So if uh, you have information related to sex, male is one, female is two, others uh, is three. Uh, so this is how you will have to do uh, coding and you need to develop the code book well in advance or after you do the data collection. So before before you enter the data, each of this, this data has to be first coded and all the data entry work uh, will be done in the form of codes. You cannot write MALE mail or F E M A L E female. If you do so, you'll be committing mistake. Somewhere you'll write M A L E. Somewhere you'll write M A L. Somewhere you'll write M L E. So, uh, analyzing the data, classifying the data will become very tedious, and you'll have to do a lot of uh, corrections after you have entered the data. So, data entry is very easy. When you enter the data in the form of codes, in the form of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, like that. If you keep on entering the data in the form of code, that is the best possible way, most efficient way, and least mistakes you will be committing. And that is how the there is a relevance of the code sheet or the code book and the process of coding it has a lot of importance in in uh, before you start the data analysis work so uh, after that in excel ms excel you uh, you open um, a worksheet and uh, a spreadsheet and in that in in the form of rows you will enter all the data of a particular respondent, one single respondent, all the data in one single row. It may go to uh, to 20 columns, 30 columns, depending upon the number of questions that you have. So each respondent's data has to be entered in a single row and in different columns. OK, so this is how the master sheet, uh, sheet, master sheet is developed and all the data is entered into the master sheet. Then after that, you will be doing the data, um, what do you call tabulation of the data, means all the data has to be produced in the form of, after you have systematically, scientifically entered all the data in the Excel sheet or in the master tape, uh, master sheet, then you will be converting all this data because this data is meaningless until and unless you are able to organize this data in the form of tables. So you will organize, you, you will convert this data into a tabular form and in the form of tables, tomorrow we'll be dealing with this. In the form of tables, um, you will be uh, arranging all the data and then that will help you or lead you to doing a proper data analysis. And uh, after that, you may be using statistical, various statistical tools and techniques like mean, median, mode, standard deviation, mean deviation. Uh, then um, there is uh, uh, there are various other uh, formulas which you which uh, regression analysis, linear regression, multiple regression, uh, then chi-square test. If you are doing hypothesis testing, uh, so on and so forth. Or if you are doing qualitative research. Um, or in, in your research, if you have both quantitative and qualitative, which these days is referred to as mixed methods research. So if you are adopting a mixed method research, then you are doing quantitative analysis of quantifiable data and qualitative analysis of qualitative data. For qualitative data, you'll have to do a thematic analysis. Later on, we'll have 
probably or you can uh, search in YouTube. What is a thematic analysis and how uh, thematic analysis can be done? And this can also be done for review of literature, which is referred to as SLR or systematic literature review. That also you do a thematic an uh, analysis of the uh, literature, existing literature, which you come across. Then at the end uh, of uh, data analysis, you will be doing the interpretation. Below each and every table, you will be writing uh, the uh, making a description of what each of these table uh, refers to, means what message it wants to communicate, so that message you will have to communicate in the form of uh, uh, words and uh, sentences and phrases. How best you can do it, uh, it is up to you. For that, you need to have uh, a good research uh, report, writing skills. Writing skills is very important here. This is where um, some of our current uh, batch of students, they fail because their comprehension skills and ability is um, are found wanting so you'll have to uh, be uh, good in writing and without um, a command in writing uh, you may find it difficult to communicate what the data wants to speak or uh, or, or tell about so um, towards the end of the research proposal you'll have to spell out what would be the chapters which is referred to as chapterization you'll have to simply indicate what would be the chapters? Chapter one, chapter two, three, four, five, like that. Chapter one is introduction. Chapter two is uh, uh, review of literature. Chapter three is research methodology. Chapter four is data analysis. You can give titles to the data analysis chapters that you may be having. Having like, for example, um, uh, the first uh, uh, chapter related to data analysis would be, let us say. Uh, a profile of the respondents, socioeconomic profile of the respondents, the uh, challenges faced by so and so. Uh, so this is how you can coin the uh, chapter uh, titles and uh, at the end you will have the um, what do you call as data analysis and then major findings and at the end discussion. So it could be one chapter. Uh, data analysis could be one chapter, then major findings and discussion could be another chapter. And please keep it in mind these days when you are publishing any journal or article, uh, sorry, any article in some journal or uh, in Scopus indexed or UGC care listed journals or referred journals of repute, discussion is very, very important. What is what what is meant by discussion? Uh, whatever are your research findings, you'll have to now correlate it with whatever review of literature you have done, whatever existing literature is there, whatever theoretical framework you have done. It means that you will have to uh, uh, jump from uh, the bottom to the top, means you'll have to link everything. So this linkage is, is the key, and this is where people find it difficult. Then uh, in your research proposal, you need to have a research timeline. What should be the period during which you will complete your uh, thesis uh, from start to finish? For each phase, as mentioned here in the proposal, um, uh, in the proposal, um, you research proposal, you will have to specify the time that you will be devoting for writing the. Uh, introduction for developing the review of literature chapter, for framing the research methodology portion chapter, and for uh, doing data collection, whether you want uh, one week or two weeks, depending upon the number of uh, respondents you would be covering, depending upon the area uh, of your research, how much you will have to travel, what uh, would be the adequate time frame? So all these you will have to spell out. If you do this in a proper manner, if you have planned it out, and if you stick to these timings, if this time frame has been or timeline has been judiciously done, your research guide, your research supervisor, your faculty supervisor will be able to guide you because they have already done all these exercises n number of times. 
So you can get support and help from your research supervisor, faculty supervisor. And um, if you stick to these times, timeline or the time schedule, I think you will be uh, able to complete your dissertation work on time and uh, uh, because you need to have time for binding the thesis, for doing editing of the entire work that you have done. Um, and then next comes the references. This is the most important thing. The references could be uh, uh, in the form of a particular style. You cannot mix uh, the references. Uh, means you have there are there are four or five different types of uh, references referencing. One is called as the APA style. The other is the Turabian style, and uh, another is called as the MLA style. Um, uh, so on and so forth. There are six, seven different styles. Uh, Chicago style. So, so you, if you choose a particular style in your references, the list of uh, uh, the list of books, the list of journal articles, the list of newspapers, the list of websites uh, or web pages that you might have referred to, uh, it has to be done in a single style. If you have adopted one style, then you will have to continue with that style. You cannot shift uh, between APA style and Turabian, APA style and Chicago, Chicago and MLA. You cannot do that. You'll have to stick to a particular style. Here, I've given an example of uh, APA style. So it starts with the author's name and uh, the, let us say, Asutosh Pradhan. So Pradhan will come first and Asutosh, only A will be written. So Asutosh, uh, sorry, Pradhan, comma, A dot. And let us say if uh, Dr. Pradeep is there, so Sahu, uh, comma, uh, P, uh, if that is Kumar, then P dot K dot. Then uh, in which year it was published, if it is 2006, as it is mentioned here, then 2006 or the year has to be within parenthesis and it has to uh, end with the dot. So you cannot remove the dot. If you miss the dot, then you have gone beyond the uh, the the norm of APS style. OK, then the uh, the original source, uh, if it is a book chapter, then the original uh, source has to be in italic form. The title of the chapter will be written in straight form and the original source will be written in italic form. Uh, if I'm wrong, please excuse me. Then then the publisher, name of the publisher, if it is Cambridge, then the name of the publisher should come first. Then uh, the place of the, uh, where the publisher is located. So if it is UK, if it is London, you'll write London. If it is India yeah, and in Delhi, you'll write Delhi, so, so on and so forth. So please don't miss out on the marks. I mean, uh, the punctuation marks, comma, full stop uh, and short, short form or full form parenthesis i mean bracket where it has to be given in what form whether it has to be written straight or in italic so all these things meticulously you will have to uh, uh, take note you sh should understand this first and uh, there is no need to memorize this but the rule you will have to follow and um, one very common mistake that um, many of us do is that in review of literature, in in-text referencing, like you have quoted somebody, and in-text reference means at the end of the sentence, uh, from where you have taken a particular sentence, let us say, or two sentences you have taken, and have quoted it as such, you have not made any changes. So within bracket, you will write the author's name and the year when it is published. So author name means only the title, means Asutosh Pradhan means only Pradhan you will have to write. Then the year, let us say if it is 2006, then you'll write 2006. And most often what students do or research scholars, PhD students do is that they will mention the in-text reference, but in the list of references or bibliography, it will not be there. Got it? So uh, whenever a thesis comes to me for evaluation or examination, I start from here, whether all the in-text references means in the review of literature, wherever they have mentioned the, the source 
or the author's name and the year, whether the author's name finds place in the reference list of references or not that I try to find out. Most often we fail to forget that this has to this work has to be done very meticulously. Then at the end, uh, you need to your thesis need to have um, the appendices. Appendices means last. So if you have used maps, if you want to uh, clarify or uh, make it clear as to what was the local local uh, locale of your study, area of your study. If you have done a, a research on uh, com uh, communities who are living along the uh, sea coast or the river bed, then um, the 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 map of the river and uh, on either side of the river, the communities that you might have uh, surveyed. So that that map also you need to need to append it at the end of your thesis. The tool that you have uh, used for data collection, whether it is the interview schedule or it is the questionnaire or it is the interview guide or it is the uh, observation guide or it is the uh, interview guide for focus group discussion, either all of these or uh, um, two or single or two in combination or three in combination that is also to be added. If your research is on uh, a topic that is close to psychology uh, or mental health, then you may be using, you might have used scales or you may have thought of using scales, attitude scales uh, or opinion scales or various other scales for that matter. So that scale which you have used, you'll have to attach it. So this is all about how to develop the research proposal. A lot of details are there in in my um, uh, in in the subsequent slides, uh, whatever I have spoken uh, in detail, it is here. I'm sure Dr. Pradeep will share. I have already shared these information uh, with him and these slides with him. The PDF file he will be, uh, I'm sure, sharing with it uh, with all of you. Uh, I would like to end here. Uh, before ending, um, uh, I would like to show two two different slides. One is the sampling strategy. Um, the uh, there is random and non-random method of sample selection, sample unit selection. Uh, within random, uh, how how uh, you have to, again another two or three different types. One is called a simple random sampling, and the other is called as a stratified random sampling. So your your population could be divided into different classes or different strata uh, or different categories or groups. So uh, if you want a representation from each of them and every group, then you will be adopting stratified random sampling method if you have gone for random sampling. So here is a pictorial presentation as to how you can do that. So simple random sampling can be in the form of a lottery method or a systematic method in the middle that is the systematic method. Every nth or ith item has to be selected. So you start with one, uh, it gets fixed. The rest of the positions get fixed. As to uh, which would be the sample units, like let us like say, for example, say, for example, in order to clarify this, uh, how to do this listing method or systematic uh, sample selection, sample unit selection method. Uh, if you are doing a research on uh, BPL families. So you go to uh, the panchayat and collect a list of uh, BPL families. And if you have, let us say, 150 uh, BPL families in that panchayat or uh, two or three panchayats, which becomes your universe, uh, out of which you are going to do your uh, survey on, let us say, 60 or 70 only, then mm, from this list, this list that you have, uh, this will decide as to which would be the ith item that you will be choosing. So if there are, uh, let us say, for example, uh, 100, and if you want to do uh, a study on 20, so 100 divided by 20, uh, I think it comes to 5. Uh, so every fifth item, so in the list, if you have selected the first, then 
then the sixth item will be, become your second uh, sample unit that will uh, be part of your uh, sample. Uh, and that is how uh, the sample size of uh, 20 uh, would get select uh, uh, would would get framed and the sample units will get automatically uh, selected. So you are uh, uh, what what does random selection of sample units mean? Is that you are not prejudiced, you are not biased, you are not picking and choosing anybody. Ye sundar lag hai, to main usko lunga, lungi. Means uh, this guy is looking uh, beautiful, or he is looking smart, or he appears to be intelligent. I should be collecting data from uh, him or her only, or from them only. If you are doing this, doing then that. you have uh, you you may be uh, writing that you have done a random selection. But in fact, it is what is referred to as uh, as non-random method. But again, this non-random method of selection of sample units also has to be done in a scientific manner. You cannot be biased. You cannot be prejudiced. You cannot have your own uh, style of choosing samples. You will have to abide by some uh, rules and regulation of sampling. Snowball <coughs> sampling refers to you first uh, choose a particular a respondent uh, whom you consider that uh, whom you consider that he would be having the right data and information you collect the data then ask him who would be the other persons in the village or in the community or in that locality who would be knowing about this so um, at times when you do not know who are your respondents in advance you do not know so random selection of the units of uh, for the sample may not be possible. So you would be using a snowballing uh, sampling method. Uh, you ask one, then you ask them for the names of two, three people uh, from him. You'll get information. Then you go and meet these two, three people. And again, from each of these two, three people, you get some names and addresses. Then you go and meet them. This is how uh, snowball sampling. Uh, goes by and convenience sample if if you have people along the road uh, how what sort of difficulties people who are living along the highway national highway four lane six lane eight lane highway what sort of difficulties they have if you want to do a study on this you'll come out with very interesting findings so your uh, so it it is uh, it is purposive sampling also it is convenient sampling also so, so you are only focusing on those people who are living along uh, the highway or the road. So I think I have done enough. Uh, the last thing that I would like to, the last thing that I would like to show is the references. These are the uh, different styles of referencing, APA style, Chicago style. Each of these you see uh, how they are different from one another. It is all given. It is all fixed. You cannot have any choice of your own. Uh, if you select uh, one style, all the list of references have to be uh, written in that style only. So thank you. Uh, any queries, any questions you have, you may come forward. Yeah. Over to you, Pradeep. Pradeep, over to you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I I welcome uh, the participants. If you have any query, any questions, uh, you can directly ask. Uh, Those who want to ask any question, please unmute yourself and ask the question. You can ask in Sorry. Odia since, since uh, yeah, yeah. our speaker, speaker the, is the, 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 Odia, the so basic, you can ask in Odia. The basic Hello, sir. Good evening. quality of Good evening. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Just let me let me yeah. first uh, say something, then you can ask a question. See, the okay, basic okay, uh, the basic character of a researcher is 
the attitude of questioning. If you do not ask questions, how can you ask questions? How can you create questions? How can you frame questions? And how can you ask questions when you are in the field? So this is the prime character that has to be there in a researcher. They should have this habit of questioning. OK. Yeah. OK, sir. Yes. OK, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. I have a question about uh, data collection. Please hmm. introduce. So who is asking question? First you introduce, then uh, introduce. Uh, yes, yourself. Myself, myself, Samir Kumar Pradhan. From yes. Vitar Kanika. In, in uh, institute. And uh, what did you see? What? Okay. okay. Okay, Samir. Okay. You proceed. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, the methods uh, we have uh, taken or techniques we applied at the time of data collection, uh, are these methods are uh, uh, is suitable or not? The questionnaire method or uh, PRA methods? How we good. can say that? Good, good, good question. See, uh, if you are doing your research on illiterate people or less literate people or people who may not understand very complex uh, uh, what do you call complex uh, terms like let us say yeah. if you are studying the impact of a program or a development program so many things may not yeah, yeah. be uh, if you if you send a questionnaire to them uh, you cannot expect them to understand all the questions uh, therein. So depending upon who your respondents are, whether they are well read, uh, whether they are adequately literate, whether they can understand the questions on their own, whether the questions are self-explanatory, that is critical. Yeah. So either you go for yeah. a interview, sh interview schedule or a questionnaire, if they are less literate and cannot understand the questions, then I think a questionnaire uh, will not be the appropriate tool. You will have to go for an interview schedule where you are there before the respondent and they will be uh, getting the clarification there and then from you. Yes, sir. I have already faced that, uh, faced that uh, method that uh, one questionnaire method is mailed to me and told to me, please visit the field and get data. When I feel visit to the field, the community people are illiterate. Uh, when I yes. asking the, them the questions, they say, I don't know, I don't know. You can answer it. You can answer it. So in this is another. This is another. This is another. Yeah, this. Uh, yes, yes. I get it. I, yes, sir. I get, I, get your, I get your answer. See, this is another issue altogether. See, it refers to the attitude that people have. No, people at times do not want to answer, give answer to specific questions, and it's their time also. Even if they have all the time in the uh, on the earth, so they may not also answer uh, the questions. Uh, they may not give you time. They may not devote that much time. They do not know how much of the time you will take. So that there are various other issues. How well you are able to establish rapport with your respondents, that is also the key. You meet them and straight away you start asking questions. And if you think that within five, ten minutes you will complete your work, why will they devote their time for you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that project was, was on the livelihood of Vitar Kanika and the livelihood of West. Right. Livelihood as such is a very complex term. Those who are well-read people, they may, for them it may appear an ordinary term, but for people it is a very difficult term. And how to uh, qualify uh, the meaning as to what is uh, livelihood, you need to have uh, 10 different questions and you'll have to explain what sort of answers you want. Only then you'll get the right answers. Somewhere in addition to Professor Pradhan, I can tell you that uh, what I understood from your question, uh, being a you know, surveyor or being a data collector, 
you first you need to understand the purpose of the study when you are saying you no know, people don't give any data uh, maybe maybe we can assume like you no know, you are unable to present the exact thing before them if that is the case you cannot get the data so first make them understand about the objective of the study and the objective of each question is very very important if you cannot communicate properly you may not get exact answer that is the issue in collection of data in that part and regarding the questionnaire and the interview schedule sir has already told you questionnaire schedule is always applicable to the people those who are educated if people are not educated enough then being a surveyor you have to use interview schedule and collect the data thank you so much any any other question see uh, and i would like to add further that i made a mention about pre testing and there is another word called as pilot so before you uh, start collecting data actual data from the field which you will be using it for your research you will have to pre test your tool properly so that um, people get the message in the right manner and they will give you the right type of information so if you are pre testing the tool at least uh, from five or six people or 10 people if you go to the field and collect information you will come to know as to how your research questions need to be framed okay next good evening good evening sir, sir. Oh, sorry yes yes any any one no, no can ask sorry please uh, carry on uh, no. good evening sir my name is sasmita yeah. ranje i am from yeah, dd surkal yeah. university uh, sir can i uh, no yeah. please uh, uh, we can use the documentary process for the data collection method or not documentary pro uh, process means documentary process mein uh, um, हम क्या हम लोग यूज कर सकते हैं जैसे एक पर्सन रही पास हिस्ट्री को नहीं की डॉक्यूमेंट करेशन क्रिएट कर रिसर्च टपिक कौन को प्रकार डेटा तमे पाइबा को चाहू यू मे you may uh, use secondary so this is what is referred to as the secondary sources secondary sources of data refers to uh, such information or data which is uh, already collected by somebody and presented in some manner or the other it could be in the form of a book or in the form of research reports published by government or published by some agency or organization or the other in the form of newspaper articles like if you are doing a uh, research on domestic violence which um, which are being published on a daily basis in newspaper so you need not meet anybody and also you can do your research based on based on uh, data which appears or information which appears in the newspapers and this is what is referred to as content analysis this is another type of research where the content which is in the form of text material you will be doing a thematic analysis uh, of uh, what is the content like and what data is presented in these newspaper articles so you can always do an exclusive research based on secondary sources of data and secondary data okay good evening sir thank you sir yes good evening uh -huh. sir i am mayank chandra okay, from this up I have a question regarding the need and benefit of doing dissertation as a student of first semester. Acha, okay, very good, very relevant question. So, uh, uh, where are you reading? MGCUB. It's from Bihar. MGCUB. Okay, uh, Bihar, Motiari. Okay, good, good. Yes. See, uh, just a second, please give me. a few seconds ha huh? to 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 supplement the previous yeah. question yes yeah yes okay ha uh, uh, let me answer okay 
do you want to have some skills? Like counter question. You keep on answering me, okay? Yes, sir. Huh. Do you want to have some new skills? Yes, no, you mm. please tell. No, sir. You don't want to have sk new skills? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. So means, see, you have invested money, you are investing money and time on your uh, master level degree program. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. So you want to have some job? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm asking you very basic and narrow questions. OK, um, yes, you want to uh, get a good job? Yes, yes or sir. no? Yes. Sir. Yes. Ah. You want to grow in your career? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yes. 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 Sir. Right. So, so see, it means that these are some of your life's objectives and goals. You want to be skilled. You know that with by acquiring these skills, like how to do data entry in Excel or SPSS, how to do data analysis in uh, Excel or SPSS or any other software. If you have hands-on experience, if you are able to acquire these skills, then if you apply for some job after passing out from MSW, if you say that I have these skills, you give me some uh, data, sample data, I will do a data analysis and I will hand it over to you within uh, half an hour or 15 minutes or one hour. Then amount of data you give me, depending on that, I will be uh, able to do uh, generate uh, tables, data tables, univariate or bivariate analysis I can do and uh, means you, univariate means only one variable you are using, uh, mm -hmm. number of males and females in your table uh, <coughs> or if you are doing a bivariate analysis tomorrow we'll uh, deal with this means on one side on the left hand side in the first uh, column you'll have sex or male and female and let us say if you are comparing it with uh, another variable that is occupation it will be there on the uh, uh, on the uh, first row okay so you will collect all these information and present all this information in in uh, in in the form of a bivariate table and then you will draw some conclusion if you are able to with confidence say that i know excel i can enter data in excel i can do a data analysis using excel by using pivot tables in excel or i can use spss and do data analysis in spss then immediately you will get a good offer and and uh, maybe a better salary if they might have thought that they will be paying you 20000 let us say they may uh, decide to give you 25000 it could so happen so if we have the right attitude and the right knowledge and the right skills if we devote time in improving our skills increasing our skills increasing our knowledge then uh, I'm sure it will uh, help you in your uh, job, job in your career, in building your career. There are a lot of jobs nowadays uh, in research. I'm sure uh, Dr. Pradeep will be in a position to speak about this better. Have you got the answer? Yes, sir. So, okay. uh, Moyank actually, uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, to supplement Professor Pradhan, I can say, since you asked uh, what is the need of know, knowing this dissertation writing or proposal writing, uh, immediately it will going to help you to complete your degree. And in, 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 lat in later time, it will help you to get what uh, Professor Pradhan told, good salary, better job opportunity and prosperity in the career. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I am John Kumar Shetty, Nimapada Puri to go. Yes, sir. 
सर आम जो ट्राइबल एरिया रे कोशनारी प्रोसेस रे डाटा कलेक्शन कर ट्राइबल लोक मैंने एबुल होना सब आंसर दाई आम सर से फोकस कर ग्रुप डिस्कसन ना कि अलग प्रोसेस अच्छे सर गोटे जिन मुंग्लीश कह कारण नन ओडिया भी अच्छा ओके सो आई होप यू आई होप यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो ऑफन वी कमिट दिस मिस्टेक ऑफ यूजिंग क्वेश्चनर इन प्लेस ऑफ इंटरव्यू शेड्यूल यू सेड दैट यू विल गो टू द ट्राइबल एरिया एंड यू विल कलेक्ट डेटा यूजिंग क्वेश्चन आर नो इट्स रॉन्ग यू हैव डिसाइडेड टू कलेक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन यूजिंग एन इंटरव्यू शेड्यूल you are not going to hand over the uh, sh- sheet of paper or five or six sheets of paper to the uh, respondent and they are not going to fill it up if they are not doing this then it is an interview schedule if you are asking the questions uh, and getting the answers from them and you are writing down the answers in the uh, schedule in the sheet of paper then it is uh, this tool is called an interview schedule so we will have to be very careful सर सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट एक्चुअली मु जयंत को पचेरा को चाहू जी जयंत मते कोह खाली इंटरव्यू शेड्यूल आ क्वेश्चनर भितरे फरकटा कोन जानि लोनि ना जानि न होय जाय ए सर ए सर कोन मते कहलो क्वेश्चनर रे हम त क्वेश्चनर हम त पचारिबा इंटरव्यू रे हम त पचारिबा तार आंसर गोरा राइट डाउन करिबा नै नै अच्छा क्वेश्चनर क्वेश्चनर रे कोन करिबा क्वेश्चन गुडा पछरी बा त क्वेश्चन गुडा पछरी कि तार आंसर आनिबा नो 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 आई 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 विल क्लेरिफाई सी देयर आर टू एस्पेक्ट्स टू डेटा एंड डेटा कलेक्शन ओके डेटा कलेक्शन वन इज कॉल्ड अ मेथड एंड द अदर इज कॉल्ड द टूल ऑफ डेटा कलेक्शन मेथड ऑफ डेटा कलेक्शन एंड टूल ऑफ डेटा कलेक्शन अंडर मेथड्स ऑफ डेटा कलेक्शन यू हैव इंटरव्यू you have observation okay and you have uh, mailed questionnaire method okay and under tool for interview which interview if it is a method the tool that you are using is called interview schedule okay and if you are um, if you are doing an observation the tool which you will be using is called an observation guide if you are as you made a reference to group discussion Uh, if you are collecting data from a group through a group discussion the tool that you will be using is referred to as an focus group discussion guide okay it is it will be referred to as an interview guide it is not a uh, it is not a sh- interview schedule now the basic difference between a schedule and a guide you need to know in a schedule the questions are fixed you have n number of questions they are fixed all the questions will have to be asked to all the respondents um, and you cannot leave out any question until and unless that set of question one set of question doesn't apply to somebody okay but if it applies to uh, a particular person then all the questions will have to be uh, asked and the answers will have to be written this is what is referred to as a standard interview schedule got it standard interview schedule means all the questions you will have to ask and all the answers will have to be received even if it is no 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 then also you will have to uh, mark no 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 okay and uh, the difference between an interview schedule a questionnaire yeah. and a guide is that in the guide you have full freedom you can frame the question there and then on the spot when you are there with the respondent when you are there with the uh, the 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 focus group when the focus group discussion is going on the answers that you will get to initial first questions will lead you to some more questions some more questions will crop up in your mind whatever review of literature you have done whatever you have read about uh, on that particular topic on which you are doing your research all these are playing on in your mind and there and then on the spot you will be framing questions and you will be asking questions one after another and in your diary you will be making note of it or if you have taken permission that you will be recording it uh, using mobile recorder or some other recorder then you will be recording all the conversation that happens okay so this is all about i think uh, uh, what uh, query you had 
I, I have sufficiently addressed your query, I think. Next. Next. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, I have a question supplement. I have a question about how many people are living in the world. That is fixed as per the objective of the study. How many people are living in the world? The interview is not the questionnaire method. How many people are living in the world? If they are living in the world, they are living in the world. If they are living in the world, that is called as the questionnaire method. If they are living in the world, they are living in the world. That is called interview schedule. So, it means that confused when you what to ask and how to ask. They are they are, they are two different different things in a research. So, you need to understand between this difference. Thank you. Any any last question? It will, this will be the last question. Any any question? Good evening, Astor sir. Good evening, Pradeep sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, I yes. You were talking about focus group. I have one yeah. question about focus group. In fact, let me introduce myself. I am SR Mohanty, studying with NIS in the MSW batch. Sir, in focus group, they normally organize or collect people and they schedule a meeting to discuss about a certain product or any anything you can talk about. And how far that data is authenticate when they represent it to a company or whatever it is? See, uh, authenticating data, uh, I think it refers to reliability and uh, validity of data. Okay. Right, uh, reliability of data. Uh -huh. Reliability of data is tested when you ask the same questions at different points of time. So after one month, again, you go and ask the same questions. If you get different answers, it means something is wrong with the person who is giving the data. It could be the the mistake could be in the form of recall what information he had given or she had given or they had given in the earlier iteration uh, it may vary with the present uh, interview if you are having so if they forget then see like let us say if you ask me what is my salary i will give you some figure but i cannot forget my salary if you ask me then the next month and even the third month or the fourth month so there are certain type of data which I can never forget and I will never manipulate. If I am manipulating the second time and the third time, you will come to know that this person is manipulating the data. So authentication, you can do it uh, in this manner, whether your data are real, uh, is reliable or not. So these reliability tests are done. Uh, sir, but, uh, to be honest, I have attended this, few. Uh, I have attended few focus group interviews. And the people who are conducting focus group interviews, they normally pay the individuals to attend the interviews. They, they, they say, okay, if for attending one hour, you will be paid this much of money. You just go, the, you sit over there in the room and they'll ask you some questions. It will be recorded and it is done. So that is what, you know, so sometimes I feel that it is biased because they are buying people to uh, you know, to collect data. I just want to know your uh, yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, I I am an investigator. Those who collect data, they are referred to as investigators. Okay. I have been hired by some company, let us say X company. And uh, after the data collection is over, my job is over. Okay. So, for on a per dime basis, I am being paid. And uh, for one group interview, if I complete it in a day, I'll be getting, let us say, 2000 rupees. Got it? Right, sir. So my, my exclusive focus is on completing the interview, collecting the information. I may not be skilled enough to collect the right type of information and in and what methodology I should be using, what tricks, tricks, Techniques I should be using, I may not be trained in that. So that is what I meant to say that research is a very rigorous exercise and you need to know and understand what is going on in the minds of people also. So until and unless we have enough experience, also we may not be able to know as to how to collect data from people. And see, if, if somebody is paying me, if if I am not 
ethically correct as a researcher then what i will do i will simply complete my job i will get my money and i will forget everything that is not the right type of uh, research that we are speaking about in fact that is simply uh, some uh, journalistic approach to collecting information most of the uh, information that i collected um, 20 to 30 percent is reliable rest is not reliable so okay next uh, to, uh, no, i think uh, we got another no uh, topic for for uh, later deliver deliberation regarding ethics of research you know to add uh, uh, ashtos sir i can tell you uh, so ethics and the rationality behind the research uh, researcher is important and how much ethically you are practicing your data collection process and how much uh, dedicated you are towards the research activities important and at the same time what he told uh, uh, sometimes people pay money to the uh, even to the respondent also it is now it has become a trend in all international organizations and the logic behind this approach is since you are taking uh, time of the most of the poor people as we are collecting data mostly from uh, uh, disadvantaged backward and poor marginalized people and since we are taking their time and paying something to take their time is not an issue but the issue is if data is not correct collected proper uh, correctly so thank you so much with this we will conclude today because we are running short of time and uh, i i request uh, tomorrow at the same time at 6 30 we will again uh, we will be meeting together and uh, i request all of you to uh, write us mail what what you do you need in future on what topic what issue we need to conduct similar type of deliberation or lecture and uh, i also request everybody to submit the pre test questionnaire i only uh, no received only 36 or 37 but today i found around 87 88 people who are there in this platform so thank you so much later on we will also discuss more more or more, or more on this issues and what issue to be discussed what uh, do you need to to have better knowledge about research or other social issues thank you so much now i request uh, mr panchanan pasayat uh, to deliver a vote of thanks thank you before that before that i would request all the participants here to spread the message that this is a new series yes. lecture series that we have started and uh, it will be an ongoing process will be i am also um, in close collaboration with dr pradeep and we will be uh, collecting people from around the country probably in the next round some international speakers also later on after three four months after experimenting so if you spread the message more and more people will be benefited uh, in this particular uh, software or the medium which you are using we can accommodate up to 300 people and we have recording facility also and uh, uh, later on we will try and improve uh, uh, our services um, most of it would be uh, unpaid our our purpose is that we should reach out to more and more number of people so that whatever experiences we have whatever little knowledge we have we should share with more and more number of people and people should benefit out of it and that is what is the only purpose it's not for business or not for anything else so thank you Good no, actually, uh, today actually uh, at eight thirty it will be closed. Actually, we did not do not know that this it the, it will stretch beyond eight thirty. So uh, tomorrow, whatever discussion you want, tomorrow we can have. But one simple information that I am giving you today, we are planning for a lecture series in every Saturday at six thirty. It will continue. What I have told. And uh, we'll have discussion more about this. It <coughs> in the next, uh, next discussion. Now I I request uh, Mr. Panchanan Pasar, please. Thank you, sir. On behalf of uh, Ganalo, I would like to uh, 
gives special thanks to Professor Atuto sir for uh, being with us and uh, giving his valuable time uh, for uh, educating us and uh, uh, his uh, uh, time for this workshop. Uh, definitely, this workshop helps us, uh, our participants, especially to the postgraduate and uh, the students for uh, developing a research proposal and dissertation. Your guidance will definitely help them. I would like to also uh, thanks Dr. Uh, Pradeep sir for his effort uh, in organizing this workshop. Last uh, but not the least, I would like to thanks all the participants for your support. Uh, definitely your presence uh, motivate us in uh, conducting further uh, workshop in your future. And uh, as uh, Dr. Pradeep says, uh, I would like to <clears throat> uh, request all participants, please write mail what uh, Dr. Pradeep says uh, regarding what type of uh, or, um, workshop or uh, any webinar you want to uh, know or uh, want to uh, be in uh, workshop. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for your participation. Thank you. OK, I take leave then. Thank you all. Thanks to all the participants and the organizers. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir.